I would say almost everybody, not everybody, but almost everybody, at some point in their lives, often when they're young, uses addictive drugs. And when I say that, I'm including tobacco and alcohol. And, and those are, you're almost socially encouraged to experiment by peers and indeed by social situations. And the great majority of people who do that carry on using those drugs for the rest of their lives without any problem at all. There's just a small group and clinical and animal experimental studies kind of come up with the same kind of number. Somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of those people who initially use drugs, some, for some reason, lose control over the use. And it's there that drug abuse and problem use and addiction springs. And None of us knows when we first smoke a cigarette behind the bike sheds in school or take a sneaky drink at a party, none of us knows the response that we'll have to those drugs and whether we are going to be those individuals that subsequently can't control the use of those drugs. Once you realize that if you take 100 people and give them early exposure to drugs, only 15 or 20 of them will lose control and become addicted. It's quite clear some are vulnerable to the effects of those drugs and some aren't. And, and a big question then is what is that vulnerability and is it represented in, in genes or gene behaviour relationships? It's a, um, a vulnerability that's present in the brain that means when that person's brain is exposed to drugs the response is different to someone who doesn't have that vulnerability. And I think there are different, different kinds of vulnerability, probably to different drugs, but maybe different kinds of vulnerability can lead you to lose control over the same drug. The one that we've studied a lot is, is the behavioural trait of impulsivity. Someone called Jeffrey Daly, who, who works in the Cambridge lab, really initially made the discovery that in studying rats, some are genetically predisposed to be impulsive. They act too quickly without sampling the environment. And if you give impulsive rats access to cocaine, they lose control over their cocaine, cocaine intake. And that relationship, high impulsivity, as a vulnerability to, for, for cocaine addiction, you also see in humans. Cocaine addicts are impulsive. I think for many years it was thought that that was because they've taken drug, but actually it's a predisposing factor. Well, I think it's really hard to answer that question. I mean, there are many more people addicted to cigarettes and alcohol than there are to cocaine and heroin. But that's to do with availability, probably in large measure. But nicotine is a very addictive for different reasons than cocaine. Nicot nicotine, when you smoke it, doesn't give you a high. It makes you socially confident and it relaxes you and it improves attention and people get hooked on it. Whereas cocaine gives you this intense euphoric state that people want to re-experience. So they're both very addictive, but for different reasons. And people have tried to measure relative addictiveness, for example, on a scale of how strongly do they increase dopamine in the brain. And in some senses that works, but I don't think that really captures the whole, the whole story. Well, there are lots of main challenges. The first is continue to understand the nature of vulnerability. What exactly are the gene behavior relationships that make some individuals vulnerable to lose control over drug use and some not? And is that different for different drugs? And does that offer a treatment target early in life? If you know someone's impulsivity is going to lead to them to losing control over stimulant use, maybe through just very simple um, training ma maneuvers in a classroom, people can learn how to control their impulsivity, which might stop them jumping off mountains and doing things like that as well. The other is the, the treatment end. I mean, here we are in 2014 and 
and there really has not been a treatment for addiction. There have been substitute therapies like nicotine patches which make smoking less harmful or methadone which stops intravenous heroin use but there aren't really very many if any treatments that help people remain abstinent when they've decided that enough is enough that if I keep doing these drugs I am going to die and I want to stop what can we do there and I think medications and psychological approaches have enormous potential but there needs to be a will to bring those approaches into the clinic and make them work and I think that's a huge challenge for a decade or so ahead.